Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2018. Brought to you by Dell EMC and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live in Las Vegas, day two of Dell Technologies World. I'm Lisa Martin with Stu Miniman, my co-host, and we're excited to welcome to theCUBE for the first time the CIO of TGen Translational Genomics, James Lowy. James, welcome to theCUBE. Ah, oh, thank you so much. It's great being here. So, genomics, really interesting topic that we want to get into and, and understand how are you making IT and digital and workforce transformation real in it, but give our viewers an overview of TGen. It started out about 16 years ago as a very collaborative effort within Arizona and really grew. Talk to us about that. Yeah, absolutely. So, so TGen is a nonprofit biomedical research institute based in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, as you mentioned, we've been around about 16 years. We were. Uh, the inception of the institute was really built around bringing biomedical technology into the state of Arizona. And we're fortunate enough to have a, a really visionary and gifted leader in Dr. Jeffrey Trent, who was one of the original guys to sequence the human genome completely for the first time. So I don't know if you get any better street cred than that when it comes to uh, genomics. And you mentioned uh, before we went live, give our viewers an, an overview of what it took to sequence the human genome in terms of time and money, and now, how 15 years later, how fast it can be done. Yeah, so you know, we've moved from a, a point where it cost billions of dollars and took many years to complete the first sequence to today where it takes a little bit over a day and about $3,000. So it's really the democratization uh, of the technology is driving clinical application, which in turn is going to benefit all of us. Yeah, James, genomics is one of those areas when we talk about there is the opportunity of data, but there's also the challenge of data uh, because you've got, a, I, I have to imagine, just orders of magnitude more data than you know, your typical company does. So talk to us a little bit about the, you know, the role of data inside your organization. Oh, well, it, data is our lifeblood. I mean, we're, we've been generating uh, you know, terascale, then petascale for many years now. And, uh, the fact is, is, you know, every time you sequence a patient, you're generating about four terabytes of data for one patient. So if you're doing 100 patients, do the math, you're doing 1,000 patients, we're talking to just an immense volume of data. And really, uh, you know, data is what drives us because that information that's encoded in our genome is nothing but data, right? It's turning our analog selves into a digital format that then we can interrogate to come up with you know, better treatments to help patients. Can, can you bring us inside, when you talk about the infrastructure that enables that? Uh, you know, what I was teasing out with the last question, it's not just about storing data, you need to be able to have access to that data, you need to be able to share data. So, as the CIO, what's your purview? Give us a little bit of a thumbnail sketch as to what your organization Oh yeah, 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 no, that's great. I, I, you know, so, uh, we've been a long time Isilon customer. Uh, the scale out storage is what really has enabled us to be successful. Uh, our partnership with Dell EMC has spanned many years and you know, we're fortunate enough to, to have enough visibility within the organization to get early access to technologies. And really that's really important because the science moves faster than the IT. So you know, having things like scale out super fast flash, you know, having new Intel processors, all these things are what really enable us to do our job and to be successful. How have, you've been with uh, TGen for a long time now, you've been the CIO for about three years. Talk to us about the transformation of the technology and how you've evolved it to not just facilitate digital transformation and IT transformation, but I imagine security transformation with <laughs> human genetic data is of paramount importance. You know, that's a really good point. Uh, it, security is always on my mind uh, for obvious reasons, because I would say there's nothing more personally identifiable than your genome. Um, there's the laws around these things still have not been totally codified, so we're we're sitting at a point today where we're still uncertain to how exactly best protect this very, very important data. Um, but to that end, we tend to fail in the in the in the closed state of doing things. You know, with everything is encrypted, 
You know, we, we are big believers in identity management and making sure that the right people have access to the right data at the right time. Um, you know, we've, we've utilized SecureWorks, for instance, for perimeter logging and to get their expertise. Because one of the things that, that I've learned uh, in my tenure as CIO is that it's really all about the people and they're, they're what drive your success. And so I'm fortunate enough to have a team that's amazing. Uh, these, these folks are, are some of the best people in their field and really do a great job at helping us you know, protect the data, you know, get access to the data, as well as you know, thinking about what the next iteration is going to look like. Yep. When you look at, just as, as a whole, the security and data protection, you think about everybody, if they get those home kits or, or things like that, how does that evolve uh, the last uh, few years? Um, I'm curious if that impacts uh, your business. Well, I, I think it does impact our business insofar that it creates awareness. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, I, I think it's really fantastic when I attend a, a, a cocktail party or something, and people come up and ask, say, you know, should I get the uh, 23 and Me or Ancestry? You know, and and they're really engaged and interested in wanting to learn about these things. Uh, and I think that's going to spur questions to be asked when they go in to get treated by a physician, uh, which is really important. I think I, I'm a believer that we should own our own data, especially our genomic data because what's more personal than that? Uh, and so we have a lot of challenges ahead, I think, in, in IT in particular, in protecting, storing, and providing that data to patients. Just, just a quick follow-up, I'm, I'm sure you secure stuff. What, what's the cocktail answer for that? If, you know, should I get that? Can I trust this company or my insurance <laughs> company and everybody else going to get that? What, what, what do you advise the, the average consumer? I, I would say read, read the, the terms of use agreement very carefully. <laughs> so the theme of the event, James, make it real. I, I, you know, few things are more real than our own data or, or our own genomes. How, what does that theme mean to you from an application perspective? How are you making digital transformation real and things like the alliance with City of Hope to impact disease study and cures? What's that reality component to you? Yeah, no, it's, it, you know, uh, I really like the, the make it real theme and I think it's something that, that we are doing every day. I think it just speaks to uh, you know, taking technology, applying it, for meaningful use, to actually make a difference, and to do something that has real impact. And I think that at TGen, you know, I've been empowered to build systems that can do that, that can help our scientists and ultimately help patients. You mentioned City of Hope. It's, you know, we're, our alignment with them is amazing. They have just hired a chief digital officer as they go through a digital transformation of their own and you know, we're on board and striving to, to help them go through this process because we're, as you might be aware, it's like everything's about the data and that's where we have to focus. Yeah. James, if you go back, you talked about the, your, your scale out architecture mm -hmm. with Isilon. How do you report back to the business as to the results that you're doing? What are, do, you, do you have any hero metrics or things that you point out that says, this is why we're successful, this is why you know, we've made the right decision, this is the, why we should be doing this in the future? Well, I, I think we're especially fortunate that uh, we can measure our success in people's lives. Uh, so meeting a, a, a kid who's in full remission from brain cancer, who is treated using you know, drugs that were derived from being sequenced and run through our labs and then our computational infrastructure and having them say thank you, I think is, is pretty much a metric that I don't know how you can beat that. Talk about making it real, that's where it, it, it's really impactful. I'd love to understand your thoughts as you continue to evolve your uh, transformation of, as a company. We've heard a lot about um, emerging technologies and what Dell EMC, Dell Technologies is doing to enable organizations and customers to be able to realize what's possible with artificial intelligence, machine learning, IOT. What are your thoughts about, about weaving in those emerging technologies to make what TGen delivers even more impactful? Well, you just said three of my favorite things that I'm spending a lot of time thinking about. Uh, you know, artificial intelligence is going to be absolutely, is required to interrogate the vast 
uh, amount of data that, that are being created. I mean, this is all unstructured data, so you have to have systems that can store and present that data in such a way that you're going to be able to do something meaningful. Um, IoT is another area where we're spending a lot of time and energy in you know, what we believe is, is like quantitative medicine. So basically taking measurements all the time to see about changes and then using that to hopefully gain insight into treatment of disease. Uh, you know, machine learning and, and some of these technologies are also absolutely going to be critical, especially when we start building out drug databases and being able to match the patient with a drug. Yeah, James, bring us inside your organization a little bit. What kind of skill sets do you have to have to mm. architect, operate, uh, a theme of this show, uh, they've got Andy McAfee uh, speaking, who's from MIT, we've spoken to. It's about people and machines. You can't have one without the other. You need to be able to marry those two. H how does an organization like yours get ready for that and you know, move forward? Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. You know, I think the, the technology enables the people and you have to have the right people to, to help make the decisions and what technologies that you, you, you you, you get and apply. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, the, the skill sets that, that we look for is generally people who are, have a broad view of the world. Um, you know, people who are particular experts, at least in the IT side, are of limited use because we need people to be able to switch gears quickly and to think about problems holistically. Uh, so I'd say most of the IT folks are work in several different disciplines and are really good at that. In the scientific side, it's a little different. You know, um, we're looking for data scientists all the time. So if anybody's watching and wants to come work for a great place, uh, you know, TGen, look us up uh, because that's really where we're where we're headed. You know, we have a lot of biologists, we have a lot of molecular biologists, we have people who do statistics, um, but it's not quite the same as data science. Uh, so that's kind of the new area that we're really focused on. All right, so. James, one of the things I always love to ask when I get a CIO here is when you're talking to your peers in the industry, how do, how do you all see the role of the CIO changing? What are some of the biggest challenges that you're facing? So, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think the role's changing towards being empowered in the business. And I think that as that has to be part of the transformation is you have to be aligned completely with what your objectives are. And we're fortunate, you know, we, we, we are. And, and I feel that very lucky to have a, a boss and, and a boss's boss who both understand the importance and the value that we bring to the organization. Um, I also see uh, that in the industry, uh, especially in healthcare, that, that a, a need for folks who are focus beyond just the, the, the EMR and daily IT things, uh, to really start looking beyond maybe where you're comfortable. Uh, I know that I stretch my boundaries, and I think that in order to be successful as a CIO, I think that's what you're going to have to do. I think you're going to have to push the envelope. You're going to have to look for new technologies and new ways to make a difference. So last question, big impact that uh, Tijan has made to the state of Arizona. So I, I read on LinkedIn that you like building high performance teams. What are some of the impacts that, that this has made for Arizona, but also maybe uh, as, a, as an example for other states to, to look to, to be inspired to set up something similar? Uh, that's, that's really a, a great question. I, I, I think you know, Arizona made an investment and you know, the way that, that it's easy to measure is if you come down to the TGen building and realize that that building was the first building that is now surrounded by buildings, including a full-on cancer center uh, that's all in downtown Phoenix. Um, and it's almost the, if you build it, they will come. But it's not just the infrastructure, it really is about the people and identifying the right folks to come in and help you know, build that, to invest in them, and to provide basically the opportunity for success. Uh, you know, Arizona has really been fortunate, I think, in, in being able to, to build out this amazing infrastructure around biotechnology. And, you know, but we're just getting going. I mean, they, we are. It's, we've only been doing this for about 16 years, and I look forward to the next 16. Well, thanks so much, James, for stopping by and talking about how you're applying technologies, not just from Dell EMC, 
but others as well to, to make transformation real, to make it a real across IT, digital, workforce, security, and doing something that's really, literally has the opportunity to save lives. Thanks so much. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. We want to thank you for watching theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin with my co-host, Stu Miniman. We are live day two of Dell Technologies World. We'll be back after a lunch break. We'll see you then. Thank <laughs> you.